Hi, and welcome to the 12th house, Hot Takes Edition. In our Hot Takes micro episodes, we'll take an idea, a concept, a theme, try to wrap it up into a short 10-ish minute episode. Cross your fingers, I can do it. I'm long-winded sometimes. And we'll drop it into your podcast feed as a little pearl of wisdom, a droplet of knowledge, a Molotov cocktail of inspiration. Really, who knows? Maybe I'll just complain for 10 minutes. IDK. It's as much a mystery to you as it is to me, dear reader. So let's just dive into today's content, which is productivity, intuition, and the little thing I call Monday Hour One. I get asked about my morning routine and my schedule a lot at the risk of sounding like an influencer. A lot of you would ask about my morning routine, but really, no shade to influencers. Also, yes, I do. I get asked this a lot. I think it's because I've worked for myself for a really long time and I'm pretty productive. And I'm really intuitive and weird. So everyone's like, how do you work? Because you seem like you don't work. But all these things get done. And I would agree with you. Yeah, it does seem like that sometimes. But really, we're all just like side-eyeing each other, right? And we're like, how do you do the things? Because I don't know if I'm doing the things right. And it seems like everyone else knows what they're doing and has this rule book for doing the things. And I don't have the rule book. No one gave me the book. We all feel that way. So don't be stressed. It is cool to learn other people's routines because it gives you inspiration. And I hope that's all that this does. Gives you some inspiration, maybe a couple ideas that you can apply or you can think about yourself. But the opposite of how I want you to feel is guilty because I know that before Monday Hour One, I was obsessed with productivity because internalized capitalism. And I would read all the productivity books and try all the frameworks and the ideas and they would work for a couple days for me and then inevitably they'd fail and I would fail and I'd feel like a total garbage can of a human being and that sucked. And so I don't want you to feel that way. And Monday hour one is the only thing that makes me not feel like that, at least right now. And I hope it works for you. By the way, if any system makes you feel like a garbage can, it's not the right system for you. No person, no system, no thing, nothing in your life should make you feel like absolute trash. So if you have things that do, you have my permission to dump them. Sound good? Okay, great. Before we get into the logistics of Monday Hour One, first, I want to say I learned the concept of Monday Hour One from Brooke Castillo at Life Coach School. And Brooke and I are really different people. So she's great. She has very different. We work in very different ways. And I have taken this concept and used it in a way that works for me. And I recommend that you do the same, that you apply what works for you and you throw away the stuff that doesn't. So this is based on Brooke Castillo's Monday Hour One with my own intuitive Michelle Pell's on twists. Okay. And you're like, tell us what it is, but I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'll, I'll explain exactly how to do it at the very end. But the reason that Monday Hour One works is because of the philosophy underneath it or the concepts underneath it. If you don't have the concepts, this turns into another shitty productivity tool. And we are not doing that. We are not doing that in 2021. Do you hear me? We are not doing shitty productivity tools. So three concepts that I need you to understand, or at least like be able to on a pop quiz, you'd be like, yeah, kind of familiar with that one that you got to know before you start applying Monday hour one. The first one, your productivity does not equate your value. So capitalism loves to tell us that we are as valuable as how productive we are, because that's literally how capitalism works, right? You are more valuable to the company you work for if you can make more things and the company can make more money based off your output, right? So you're technically more valuable because you bring in more money to the company. But that is not right. That is a cognitive distortion. Your innate value as a human being has nothing to do with your ability to cross things off a checklist. Just a healthy reminder. You are so valuable that you are invaluable. We can't even put a price on you innately. Whether you are checking off all the to-do lists or you are blobbing on the couch, you are invaluable. Okay? Let's just put that idea in a little pot. Let's put it on the back burner. Let's let it simmer for a while as we talk about this other stuff. Okay, let me turn your attention to another concept. Procrastination. As the CEO of procrastination, these Two things I'm about to tell you really hurt my feelings, but they also are correct. They resonate. Procrastination is two things. Well, first off, procrastination is not a sign of laziness. Procrastination, number one, is a form of perfectionism. Number two, procrastination is a form of self-harm. Let's discuss. 
if you are a perfectionist, I'm raising my hand right now perfectly, by the way. If you're a perfectionist, this will sound familiar to you. I would rather not do it than not do it perfectly. Because as perfectionists, if we sit down to paint something for the first time and it doesn't look like it's Van Gogh's most amazing masterpiece, because if we sit down to a piano and we don't automatically sound like Mozart incarnate, because if we start a business and it isn't immediately profitable and the biggest success and it hits us on the Forbes 30 under 30 list, we would rather not do the thing. Like we'd rather not even try if we're not going to be amazing at it. And that's really toxic for our growth as human beings, right? Because we have to fail at things in order to be successful at them. Like we just do. That's It's called practice. And perfectionism will get in the way of you going out and making things and learning about yourself and helping and changing the world 100% of the time because you're never going to be perfect and you're never going to do it right. You just aren't, babe. You aren't. You're going to mess up the whole time. That's like being human. And guess what? You're still lovable. You're still enough. You're still valuable. We learned as perfectionists that we are not acceptable and we're not lovable unless we are perfect or unless we are like so unoffensive that someone can't find a reason not to love us, right? If I'm just so perfect and there's nothing wrong with me, how could someone like say that they don't love me? Because there's no reason for them to say that. The truth is like you're lovable because of all of your messy middleness, because of all your failures, because of all your mess ups, because of all your weirdness, you are lovable. So procrastination is a form of perfectionism. And every time you feel yourself beginning to procrastinate on something, shine a light on it and say, is this my perfectionism talking? And can that bitch please sit down? <laughs> Just kidding. You can be nice to your inner perfectionist. Okay. Concept number two, procrastination is a form of self-harm. This is very tender to me because I was and still can be someone who really harms themselves with their actions and with their thoughts. We're all struggling with this concept, right? Not we all. I don't want to put that on you. I struggle with this concept. I'll speak from the eye. Procrastination is a form of self-harm because think about what happens when you procrastinate. When you put off paying that ticket, that parking ticket, right, that you can totally afford, gives you anxiety, you think about it. You think about the fact that you need to pay the ticket and that the longer that you wait to pay the ticket, the more you're going to have to pay to pay the ticket. And then what if you get pulled over when you're driving on the highway and the cop sees that you haven't paid the ticket and then they take you to jail, right? <laughs> that's crazy, but also that's kind of what happens in my brain. So I'm assuming that's what happens in other people's brains. This is harm because this anxiety is something that we are directly in control of and that we could very easily get rid of if we just paid the parking ticket, right? It's not that we don't have the money. It's not that like we can't find a fucking stamp or we don't have internet. It's that we just didn't do it, that we stayed. We chose the anxiety. And, you know, you're going to have to unpack this for yourself. But I noticed for me, sometimes it's easier to feel pain than it is to feel pleasure or to feel joy or to feel rest or to feel love. And in order to feel something, to distract myself, I will sometimes choose the pain, right? I'll choose the harm. And I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to perpetuate that. So every time you procrastinate, take a look and see if that's your perfectionist or that's you trying to put yourself in harm. And it might not be that, right? It might be that you're like, well, today I'm just feeling a little lazy, so I'm going to push it off, right? And that's totally fine. But notice that because this whole system works on you being accountable for yourself and you thinking of your schedule as a self-loving practice. And the opposite of a self-loving practice would be procrastination, especially if it is a form of perfectionism or a form of self-harm. And the way that Monday hour one can really work is when you hold yourself in high regard and you say, I have created this schedule or I have created this week for myself out of love and out of the idea that I want to thrive and I want to set myself up to feel good. And I don't want myself to have anxiety or to feel less than or to be overwhelmed because I'm not at my best. My magic doesn't flow as quickly when I'm putting myself in that situation. Finally, the concept that you need to understand is 
that we control time and that time is just this delusion that we like all are collectively in agreement on. We're like, oh, yeah, minutes, hours, days, right? <laughs> like, no, no, come on. A minute is not 60 seconds. Think about like when you really had to go to the bathroom and like you had to wait. You had to wait outside like a bathroom stall because it was all full or you're like waiting on the airplane for someone to leave and you're like, oh, my God, it must have been a 100 hours and it's only been like 45 seconds, right? Time expands and contracts according to our relationship to it and how much attention we give it. So that being said, there's this thing called Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law states that a task will expand or contract according to the amount of time that we allot for it. So if I give myself two hours to fold the laundry, it'll take me two hours to fold the laundry. If I give myself two weeks to fold the laundry, it will take me two fucking weeks. I will wait until that last moment to fold the laundry, right? Same thing with our work. If we give ourselves three days to write a blog post, it'll probably take three days and we'll finish that blog post at midnight on the day that we said we wanted to finish it. If I give myself three hours, you better believe that it's done in three hours. I've never written 500 words so fast. Am I right? So this is all to say that we can control time. We are magicians. We can control time and space according to how we pay attention to it and how we respect it. And that's a really important component, respecting your time, respecting the concept of time and playing with the concept of time. Very important when it comes to making a Monday hour one work for you. So let's talk about how to make Monday hour one work. First, I'm going to drop my own Monday hour one worksheet into the show notes. So you can grab a copy of that below. The first thing that we're going to do is have our sort of quarterly big goals at the very top of our list. I keep these in mind because everything that I'm doing, like my day-to-day tasks, I can be discerning about how I want to spend my time and energy. When I look at my goals or my visions for what I'm wanting to create and I see, oh, well, if I'm going to be spending my time moving towards this goal, what is it that I need to do in order to fulfill that? Do I really need to reply to XYZ email from a random person in order to move closer to my goal of whatever it might be, feeding a thousand starving children? Maybe, maybe not, right? So having your top goals for the next 90 days or the next quarter on top of your Monday hour one can really help sort of laser focus your vision, your attention. At the beginning of your week on Monday morning, this is why it's called Monday hour one or Sunday night if you get Sunday scaries, you're going to brain dump everything that you need to do for the week. Things like redo website page and send email to person and write book report. (laughs) I don't know if you're like in the fifth grade and listening to this, write book report or pay taxes or go to grocery store or make that appointment, right? All the things that you need to do and you're going to brain dump it in one place. And then you're going to assign those tasks to the day that you want to do them. So you have your layout of Monday through Friday or Monday through Sunday. If you're a seven-day workweek person, I have Monday through Sunday because I will take off days in the middle of my week often because I like to have a flexible schedule. And then you assign the tasks to any given day. You can go a step further and you can assign actual hours to the tasks that you've got for yourself. So you could say on Monday from nine to 11, I'm going to redo my website. On Tuesday from three to five, I'm going to brainstorm my quarter four goals, whatever it might be. That doesn't work for me. I don't like having that rigid of a schedule. I need the flexibility to sort of move around my day and wake up in the morning and decide, okay, what do I want to start with? So I don't like to to be too rigid about it. But this structure really helps my own intuition and creativity because We work best as creative and intuitive people when we have parameters, when we have some structure to work off of, when we've got some rooting, right? It's just like a tree can flow and sway in the wind and be much more flexible when it's got really deep roots because that rootedness is safety and it allows it to like spread and fly even more. Same thing with our intuition and our creativity. When I create structure for myself, I am so much more creative and intuitive because my brain can focus on the intuitive and creative things as opposed to worrying about my schedule, worrying about and having anxiety around getting those tasks done and when am I going to do them. The beautiful thing about Monday Hour One is that you can look and see in one quick glance when any given thing on your to-do list is going to get done. Ah, I'm going to pay my accountant on Thursday morning. Great. That means that Monday through Wednesday, I don't need to worry about paying the fucking accountant, right? That's what I do on Thursday. It's all good. And this is really helpful if you work in teams because if you're working with someone and they say, oh my gosh, really need that XYZ thing from you. 
When will you be able to do it? You can say, oh, I actually have it on my calendar for Wednesday afternoon, so I'll get it to you then. It is awesome to work with someone who uses Monday Hour One just because you know where you stand with them. And it also creates a really nice boundary for your working style. And that's pretty much how Monday Hour One works. You can move the days around and your tasks around according to if you finish them or complete them. And if you don't, that's okay too. You always know that you can move it to the next day and you can reorganize your schedule accordingly. When you first get started, you'll probably overschedule yourself because we tend to be temporally optimistic. We think that we can get much more done in an hour than we actually can. (laughs) And that's okay. That's just something you got to try for yourself. And as you practice this more, you'll get even better at it. But this has saved my life and definitely helped me get through all of the things that I need to do in order to make this business work. The last thing that I'll say is I'd like to anchor every single day with one big thing. For me, that is the big needle moving task or the big focus that will help me accomplish those goals that are above my Monday hour one, my sort of like high level vision for what I want to create in the world. My one big thing on any given day might be I send an email to that one person who I need to talk to, or maybe I pitch myself to XYZ podcast. I would never do that because I'm a projector, but you get what I'm saying. It's the one big thing that will move you closer to your vision, to what you're trying to create and do. Having this prioritized and making sure it gets done will make you feel like you never have a wasted day because I know if I just do that one big thing, I'm good. Like I'm moving towards the future that I want to create. And that way I never have anxiety and I never feel bad if I don't accomplish my to-do list. Because if I've done that one big thing, then I'm good to go. I'm set. And everything else is just gravy, right? So that's Monday hour one. I hope that you enjoy it. And I did not keep this to 10 minutes, but I'll do better next time, I promise. And you can grab the worksheet for Monday hour one in the show notes. Let me know what you think. Shoot me a text at the number in the show notes. If you were like, yes, love it. Or you're like, what? And I'll see you on the internet. Okay, bye.